everyone, it's the Soviet Ant and welcome back to a new video on Rise of Nations. So today I decided to do a little tutorial for uh, all the new players that don't really know how to play because it's kind of a complex game. But once you know the hotkeys and all the tactics you can do, it gets really easier. So let's start this tutorial. So once you create a new game and you join it, the first thing you want to do is to choose a nation. One of the best beginner nation, in my opinion, is Nigeria. Because Nigeria has a lot of resources and population, so MP and resources won't be a problem. And there's a couple of formables you can do in the region. But I'm going to play as South Africa. First thing. You go in this research tree, you finish it first. It's the best way to get a lot of research points, to get a good economy and things like that. You shouldn't spend it on other things. After that, you do the Military Service Act. Military Service Act will give you more MP. For new players, I recommend keeping the balance uh, military doctrines, but I personally prefer the mass attack when I'm a country with less than 1 million MP. To invade a nation, you first have to justify on it. So for example, I want to invade Etswani. I click on a city, the flag, justify war goal, conquest if you want to take it. So you go on conquest here. You can do only two justifications at the same time. No more. So don't spend time trying to do more. After that, the economy. The first thing you want to do for the economy is electronic factories. Uh, in some countries, you won't have the resources to make those factories, so you have to buy them. But in my case, I got the copper and the gold, so I won't need to go in the economic tabs, resource and trades here and go buy copper and gold. But after that, the next step is to make a, a steel factory. I need titanium for that. And I don't have titanium, so I can start making it with my money. And go here, buy titanium. So, for example, uh, Russia is an AI, so I can buy it. It will automatically accept. And Russia is very safe. But like Ukraine, for example, Normally, Russia invades it, so you're gonna have to go back in your trades and do it. Uh, after that is done, you go in economic laws and put maximum research pending. After that, you can get some government spending. Uh, the research pending is really not necessary, but for players like me who like to have nukes, well, Re the research pending is really needed, or I won't be able to have it first. Now, my justification is done. So, I click on the city again. Declare war, and you can see here, conquest. I can click here, like that. And when invading an AI nation, what you want to do is to go on a city, wait for its troop to go on you, and after that, invade it. As you can see, my factory is already, so I can start selling the resources, electronics. So what you want to do is take an AI nation and ask them to buy your resources, your electronics. And in some case, they're going to say, no, you just try on another nation. But normally, they, they accept if you are early enough. So you can go check on the wiki or other YouTube videos to see uh, how much each nation buys. I really guess myself it's really not needed. Just learn to guess and you're gonna be good. Now I finish invading. So when you invade you want to auto capture if it's an AI. Uh, but so now you want to peace with them. You want to annex them. So you go on the you click on the flag of war annex city, sea, state, treasury, and resources, and here you right click, you right click, so you take most of it. 
So just the next them, I'm starting to integrate them and I got the resources. That's great. So for example, auto capture, less auto here. I, it's gonna automatically take it. If you're against a player, you have to do a little bit, bit more strategies. I'm gonna show it later in the video. I can start making tanks. Tanks cost a lot, but they're the most efficient troop. Something that is really important to know about tanks is they cost oil. So you want to buy oil to Saudi Arabia or a country like that. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. And once you have a, an army based out of tanks, it gets a lot easier to conquer AI nations. There's a, a couple of hotkeys that are really, really useful to know. So, for the tabs example, you you don't want to click on the flag always and go like that. Diplomacy. No. You want to be efficient. So, personally, what I do is A. So, I get in the research tab. And after that, I can click. But, ideally, you would be better. So, Q is for country. If, so policies, ideologies, we're going to talk about it later. Conscription law, not really important. And rankings to know how good you are. After that, diplomacy is W. Economy is E. And military is S. What's really important to know about troops is they, they can unite into one troop. So for example, I've got the the tanks here and I I've put auto merge off for each of them. It's not needed but uh, it's easier to invade because now it's 12 units of tanks that invade instead of one that is really strong. Now, for example, I want to invade this region it's really arid it's gonna slow down my troops what you want to do is go on start training right click and you get the advanced training options i can trade so they are stronger in arid biomes it costs a lot of money over time but once it is done it won't cost any money to maintain and it will very help in invasions in arid biome so for example Norway it's a Nordic mountainous region it really helps to have the uh, winter specializations so you started your game yours you are invading a couple of nations what you want to do is go in country and see your formal boss so the formal boss are the uh, decisions tab and what does it do? Well, it gives stability, so it's very, very, very useful to have them. So, for example, I can form the South African Union, I think. I'm not sure of the name. But basically, if I invade all those countries, I'm going to have a boost in my stability. And they're going to be integrated, integrated automatically. That's very good so what you want to do is to justify on those countries if they are ai and invite them as soon as possible to rise your your stability and your rankings after that there's the ideology that is very important so mine is a bit bug it doesn't work very well i don't know why it does that but what is important to know is that there is several main ideologies. There's the socialism, communism path that will give you more factory output but less tax income and it will give you more unrest. Nationalism, fascism, fascism path will give you less tax income and even worse unrest but it will give you uh, a lot of MP, a lot of opportunities for war and it's really good when you want to go at war so if you are an aggressive nation 
uh, I suggest to go nationalism because it doesn't have any debuff, but I personally prefer going socialism. After that, there's the democracy path. I can't see it. I can't see it here, but basically, it's less good for war and very, very good for tax income. So here, socialism, and as you can see, I got a bit more electronics, 16 to be uh, to be precise. And those electronics, I can sell them. That's why uh, I prefer doing socialism. Okay, so as you can see, I formed the South African Union. And I'm going to show you how to fight an overseas war against a player. Uh, so my target is going to be Spain. And... What is important to know is that uh, what is important to know is that there is a lot of dangers in overseas war. They can use some marines to destroy all of your army in 12 seconds. So you gotta be ready for the possibility that they've got something at home. First thing you wanna do is build a destroyer. Destroyers can kill some marines pretty easily, so you don't don't get killed by one of them. It's very very important to do that. So my destroyer is ready. Okay, so I've got my army ready to invade Spain. So you don't want to justify too much early, or they're gonna prepare against you. You get your troops close enough. And you can justify after that. I declare the war. I'm going to land on the on Spain. I'm just gonna take Madrid. So Spain played like an AI. I'm kind uh, sad about it. When you invade new land, you want to take the factories and destroy them because they might ruin you. Uh, because you won't have the resources. I think I'm gonna invade Turkey. I'm going to send my troops to make the landing before the war is actually declared. Here, I declared war. I'm going to try to peace with all the other players. If they don't want, they might send reinforcements, but they won't be able to actually do anything. Once you start invading, you can just watch your superior army you made with my tricks make them crumble if you want to take troops like these and make them go like here for example what you're gonna do is shift and click instead of going here do a path for them for example I want them to go through the sea like this instead of going through the land and dying of attrition this is gonna make them go by the sea instead of using the, the point I, I gave them there. It's very useful for a lot of things. I think I've covered pretty much everything a beginner must know. If I have forgotten something, you can tell it in the comments. See you later.